Hi, I'm Rhiannon McRae, the editor for Trends in Genetics, and I'm here with David Page, who's at the Whitehead Institute in Cambridge, and he's going to tell us a little bit about the battle of the sexes, or at least the battle of the sex chromosomes. Um, so can you give us, you know, just start maybe with just a very a brief history of the sex chromosomes, if you will. So. Sure. I'm XX, you're XY. How did we, yes. how did, where did the X and Y come from, well, and how did we get to be... Well, yeah. maybe not how did we get how to the X, get, X, yeah. and X, Y, but... Well, let's just say where did the X and Y come from? Yeah. So the X and Y chromosomes over the last 200, 300 million years, so it's not long after we parted company with the ancestors of birds, okay. the, a, an ordinary pair of autosomes began to become, and have over the course of the last 200 million years, become today's X and Y chromosomes. Okay, but the X and the Y are very different, at least on and first incredibly, appearances. Incredibly different. So the X, it turns out the X chromosome held on to most of the genes okay. that were on that ancestral mm -hmm. autosome. Mm -hmm. The Y chromosome lost most mm -hmm. of them. It's just hanging on, the human Y chromosome today hangs on to about 17 okay. of the almost 700 genes that were on that ancestral okay. autosome. So is this continuing, you know, I mean, is the Y going to shrink and disappear altogether or? Well, or? such has been speculated <laughs> that the Y chromosome is going to disappear in maybe a few million years time. Mm -hmm. But it actually looks, if we compare the human Y with the Y chromosomes of other primates and you sort of look at the whole big picture, mm -hmm. it becomes quite clear that the gene content of the Y chromosome is stabilized. Okay. It lost a lot of genes millions of years mm -hmm. ago, mm -hmm. but it's flying at a pretty steady but low altitude okay. right now. Okay. So you've got some recent results that actually suggest that there's maybe a lot more going on with the Y than just yeah. sort of maybe what people traditionally yeah. think of its role in... So we've been learning a lot about the Y chromosome, mm -hmm. not only by looking at the human Y, mm -hmm. but also by looking at the Y chromosomes of other of our mammalian relatives, like the mouse, okay. for instance. And it turns out the mouse Y chromosome it's actually four times the size of the human Y chromosome. And it has an, an outrageous amplification of a small number of genes. So, so outrageous that these, this small number of genes and the DNA in which they're embedded have come to mm -hmm. comprise 95% of the mouse Y chromosome. Okay. And so what is this, you know, 95% of the Y chromosome, and, but you don't know what it's doing? Well, or? so the crazy thing is that, and these, and the genes that are embedded in this 95% mm -hmm. of the Y chromosome, uh, were not on the ancestral autosome okay. that gave rise to the Y. Okay, so this we is didn't have we didn't have any inkling of what this was about, uh, really, until we looked across to the mouse X chromosome, mm -hmm. and what we found was that there were similar genes, mm -hmm. not identical, but similar genes, related genes, also amplified on the X chromosome in the mouse. Okay, but again, not related to the ancestral autosome. Not from the ancestral so, autosome. So these have come from elsewhere. These have come the from genome? elsewhere. So you know we the and what we but what we really think is that now that these amplified genes on the Y mm -hmm. and amplified genes on the X are evidence of what we suspect is a pitched battle between the X and the Y chromosomes to be transmitted to the next generation. Okay. So we conventionally think of Oh, yeah, it's 50-50, whether it's a boy or a girl mm -hmm, yeah. in the next generation. And that's, you know, it's going to be a girl if the sperm that fertilizes the egg carries an X chromosome. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a boy if the sperm that fertilizes the egg carries right. a Y chromosome. Right. But if you're, if you're riding, if you're a Y chromosome or if you're an X chromosome, mm -hmm. you might get some selfish ideas and say, next generation, I'd like to win. Okay, the yeah. I'd like to win more than 50% of the time uh -huh. at the expense of uh -huh. the other. So this is like a, a meiotic drive. This situation. is a meiotic drive okay. or segregation uh -huh. distortion, selfish chromosome behavior. Okay. I, as a chromosome, want to, mm -hmm. um, I'm greedy. I want to win more mm -hmm. of the time than my, than my counterpart. Okay. And so these genes mm -hmm. that are amplified on the Y or on the X, we think they're a kind of... Um, uh, you know, we think that they have become combatants mm -hmm. in this in this battle between the X and the Y chromosomes. We think they've been imported into the Y chromosome. We think they've been independently imported into the X chromosome. Okay. And they're fighting on behalf of their host uh -huh. chromosomes against each other. So do you guys have any idea what these genes do? They encode proteins? These are protein-coding protein genes. These are protein-coding okay. genes. Mm -hmm. Again, it's a very... You have to realize these are... It's a very small number of proteins that are encoded okay. by the by these genes on the Y. Very small number on the X, but they're they're present in literally like hundreds of copies uh -huh. on the Y chromosome. At least dozens of copies on the X chromosome. Uh -huh. The proteins they encode 
by comparison to other known proteins in the, uh, encoded by the genome, we think that these are involved in the processes of actually transmitting the chromosomes okay, from so one generation almost, to the next. Almost mechanically. We think they we think that they are that these that are physically are, okay. we think these proteins mm -hmm. are physically involved in binding to chromosomes mm -hmm. and helping transmit them or maybe you know it's one possibility would be that Friends these are messed up versions ah. of these things that could even potentially oh, poison poison the other evil. chromosomes. Battle of the sexes. <laughs> right. Such a dirty fight. Right. Okay, right. so so this is a lot. A lot of the stuff that you've been talking about is in mice. This is in but mice. You it started in mice. Okay, but so is a similar thing going on in humans? Well, so we've seen very recent. We've seen something very very similar, actually, on the cattle, on the bull X and Y chromosomes. In, okay, in cattle. And um, where it looks like there's again an outrageous amplification uh -huh. on the Y, some amplification on the X, very similar, uh, mm -hmm. but non-identical proteins involved, and. Having seen this in the mouse and the bull, mm -hmm. we then said, well, was it there in the human and we just missed it? Mm -hmm. Was it there in the human X yeah. and Y? And we actually, now looking back at discoveries we've made actually 15 years ago, we now say, see through new, through new eyes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we see that there is an amplified gene family on the human X and a related amplified gene family on the human Y mm -hmm. that look very much like they could be taking on antagonistic roles okay. and might be, again, uh, serving on behalf of their uh, host chromosomes okay. in a battle for transmission. So a similar situation where it looks like yeah. these were recruited to the sex chromosomes. Absolutely. Okay. I want to back up and just ask you about cattle. So yeah. this seems like a kind of an unusual choice to study sex chromosomes because you say bull, I think of breeding, right? So yeah. humans have really bred yeah. cattle for many years. Right. So are you sure, you know, you know, when you look at the X, you know, when you look at the sex chromosomes in cattle, how do you know what, that you're seeing is sort of, you know, the ancestral yeah. state so versus what So could it just be the shaped? result of human intervention? Yeah. Selective breeding of yeah, cattle yeah. might have somehow enhanced mm -hmm. uh, certain traits. Yeah. Well, that's a great possibility. So we looked at it. Mm -hmm. It turns out you know, that there are a lot of species related to domesticated cattle. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Boss Taurus is the domesticated <laughs> cattle. There are lots of other living species mm -hmm. of, of, of uh, relatives. Mm -hmm. um, water buffalo, bison, uh, the gar. Uh, and so together with some collaborators, we obtained samples. We studied samples from all of these existing uh, uh, species. And it turns out they all have these mercenary genes embedded on their X and like Y that. chromosomes. Mercenaries. And, uh, and actually, we're, we're now talking about uh, this phenomenon having been in place mm -hmm. in cattle for at least 17 okay. million okay. years. Okay, so it doesn't look like something that we've been doing by Not something that is, is due to the hand of okay. humans. Okay, right. well, <laughs> I guess we have our limits. That's right. Um, okay, well, I just I want to kind of end on a note that I've, I've asked the other people, too. So we're here at celebrating the 150th anniversary of Gregor Mendel's laws. Right. Do you remember learning about the, the laws of inheritance, or do you remember doing a Punnett Square for the first time? Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was good. It was actually good. It was uh, high school. I had my first biology okay. class. I thought it was pretty good stuff. I like the math, you know, yeah. the arithmetic. Uh-huh. Um, so it yeah. has a nice logic yeah. to it. Yeah, Hardy-Weinberg law, all that stuff too, you know, even beyond Mendel. And of course, the crazy thing is, what mm -hmm. I'm talking about now, mm -hmm. with this battle between the yeah. sexes, is basically about the X and the Y trying to bend the rules of Mendel. That's right? a neat way to look at because, it. Because, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, yeah. basically when, when, when our sex chromosomes mm -hmm. evolved, what it meant was that we were Mendelizing the, the question of becoming oh, a male uh -huh. or right, female. Right. You're making it 50-50. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this is really what I'm talking about are all these uh, species, including mm -hmm. ourselves, sort of disrespecting the laws of Mendel and trying to bend them in, in selfish ways. All right, thank you. Thank you.